Well, hello kids. Welcome back to Grumpy's. Hey, I guess you can tell by the title what's going on today, but uh, I'm going to get straight into it. So, uh, today is an unboxing, a very special unboxing. This is, uh, this is the first knife I've won from someone in the knife community, so uh, that's really cool. I can feel what I think are some tactical peanuts in there. Uh, along with it, but I'm going to open this off camera in case there's any, uh, well the other side back here is all kinds of personal information, but uh, uh, I'll open this and get all the peanuts out of the way and you guys don't have to worry about that. I'll be right back. Alrighty, got her open. Ah, i tell you what, I got part of it open. <laughs> there we go. So, Danny sent me this knife, which I will open up in just a second, along with one of the Little Fit Devils stickers. So, it's Fair and Forge. Sting oh, it's the wrong box. I was like, that's not the one we talked about, but I, I like that. All right. So, this is it. The Steel Wheel Lantern. Oh yeah. Nice looking little knife. D2. Tachenko design. Steel wheel there. Yeah. So far I've been happy with my, uh, the only other steel wheel I've ever had is the uh, Shaula. Bust that out too. So, yeah, that completes my steel wheel collection right there. So it doubled it. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate it greatly. Liner lock fits in there nicely. Not bad access. Like that. Got a choil up front. Holds in. Yeah, I dig it. I like the looks. I'll get it. I'll get it in the pocket and give it a try. But uh, thank you again, Danny. This is just a quick unboxing so I could get this out and uh, start taking a look at it. Let you guys in on it. And uh, we'll get back with a day two review uh, that I'll tack on to the end of this. And it'll have all of the, uh, the pertinent data, the stats, and all that. Two days later. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Hey, yeah, uh, we're here for a quick day two review of the steel wheel laner I got from Danny over at D's Knives. I just wanted to take you for a quick walk around this thing. This is discontinued, so I don't want to spend too much time belaboring all the ups and downs of what you may or may not like about it. But if you get a chance to find one out on the secondary market or you find one in a little shop or something i wanted to have a quick review of it out there for anybody who might want one so stats i'll put the uh the the printout of the stats over here um which will have all the metric equivalents in it and everything so i don't have to fumble through them while we're talking but let's get to it we're gonna need wazoo stick so you can see this thing is about seven and a half inches long from tip to tail blade is 3.25 inches long the cutting edge is just shy of that at 2.875 the blade material is d2 Give you another quick look at that. I know we looked at it in the unbox. There's the billboarding. It tells you D2. It tells you who designed it. We'll get to that later. The steel wheel on this side. So D2 blade stock. They claim is 0.12, which is 12 hundredths of an inch thick, just shy of an eighth of an inch, three millimeters, however you want to say it. And what I came up with was just shy of that 11.1185, 11 1185 10 thousandths. Uh, so yeah, they were pretty much right on. Still three, still came out as three millimeters. Uh, profile is drop point. That is a flat blade grind. 
and that is a stonewashed black coated blade plain edge there is no um, serrated version of this knife so plain edge this thing runs on bronze washers uh, it's a little on the stiff side I'll get to uh, I'll get to a bit of that later but handle material is G10 that backspacer also black G10 uh, in nested liner lock so good look decent access up there uh, all of the hardware on this is brushed stainless steel including the pocket clip that pocket clip is stout I didn't have any problem with it on um, jeans and shorts made out of stiff material but trying to get it into uh, a pair of shorts that were kind of flimsy it did not want to go on there you had to reach down and pull it up not a big deal it's not the only knife I own like that it's not a deal breaker for me just letting you know anyway handle length 4.25 inches and the weight they claim is 3.99 ounces or 113.4 grams I came up with 3.19 ounces so quite a bit below that or 90.4 grams is this thing ambidextrous I do not consider it so it is definitely right hand biased with that nested liner lock although the pocket clip does mount right or left tip up only so flipper tab is the only means of deploying this one it is designed by Anton Kachinko who designs quite a few things for has at least for steel wheel I don't know if he's still designing for them but the cut jack and this I believe one or two others at least a couple others uh, I should say and I'm pretty sure even though steel wheel doesn't billboard it on their knives the way some do I'm pretty sure this is OEM'd in China uh, I'm 99% certain of that I did not write it down um, but I know it's one of the things that is important to some people so I wanted to let you know anyway let's get the wazoo stick out of there and begin the parade of comparison knives beginning with anybody want to take a guess you got it there is that Crawford Casper we all know and love I'll leave oh no I won't you know I can't oh. miss the flipper tab altogether on that first one there we go completely dwarfed by the two completely absurdly large EDC knives I have I'll leave that one out for a minute it's too pretty so whittle our way down pun intended whittle our way down to size with next one the pair of two PM2 sorry I know some people are touchy about that too and the Mannix 2 both of them dwarf the lanner still the pair of three still MIA so it is still being played by the Sage 5 which now we're getting into the territory handle depth looks very similar um, between those two and here is the one that I am fairly certain is going to be a perfect comp for this and yeah very nice comp if you know the tops mini scandy folder MSF 4.0 then uh, you know that this one uh, yeah it's missing a little chunk of handle back here and uh, everything else the depth the length even the the handle or the uh, blade length is pretty much the same oh sorry I shouldn't be sitting there fidgeting off camera with knives get you in here with the sway back the Kaiser sway back getting a little smaller now so now we're getting down to the small end of EDC and we'll throw that sin cut scepter out there so yeah much smaller little smaller still working our way down 
but that's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to throw in show you what this would look like in my normal EDC rotation. So the small folder that would normally accompany a medium sized folder and a small fixed blade. Wow, I tell you what, let's get this all up here. This is one of those times where the dark end of the mat is starting to eat my knives with the dark handles up. But anyway, uh, this is kind of what my normal ADC rotation would look with this one mixed in with the small folder and a small fixed blade. So this is basically what I would carry in any given day. Yeah, that. Yoink. So that's it. Here it is once again with the other steel wheel. And now we're going to talk about the one major shortfall I have with this knife that I've discovered in the last day or two. And that is, I, I love the fact that the G10 is rounded off. It's nice, perfectly grippy. Handle doesn't cause me any problems as far as the grip because the way they have it, this falls right in. My finger goes right across that the dip right at the base of the the clip not a problem there so that works the problem i have is uh, my chubby ass hands uh when i'm in a normal grip there's just no room for that fourth finger it's like a three and a half finger grip and my pinky falls right on top of that that ridge that little point right there so not comfortable there and if i pull this finger up into the choil and then try and wrap my fingers in everything wants to slide this way all of these fingers want to slide this way which pushes this finger towards that little point right there so um that choil isn't big enough for my chubby fingers and if I pull up here it, it wants to kind of push me forward the way the handles design this is really made for somebody with just slightly smaller hands that's the problem it's not a problem with the design it's my hands aren't made for this knife it's this knife was designed for someone with hands slightly smaller than mine see unlike the steel wheel Shaula no choil uh, forward of the flipper just that one up front and it's perfectly long, just long enough. So anybody with hands bigger than mine may not even like the Shaula, right? Uh, but this isn't about the Shaula, so let's get that out of the way. So, you've seen the specs, you've seen the comps, you've seen how it looks in my EDC. I don't know what else I can tell you other than the one issue I had with this knife, and that's just an ergonomics issue with me, right? So the ergos for me, it doesn't work. But as far as the overall ergos, this thing is soft. I don't feel anything that would cause anybody any real hot spots other than that little point right there if your hands aren't the right size. So, I don't know if you got any questions or whatever. Um, let me know here some just last minute comparisons because the reason they were all hanging out down here is all of these guys are getting ready to take a walk over there and get on the sharpener and get themselves some new pants on their edge and uh, clean up the pivots and clean them out and just make them a little more smooth and presentable and this one is getting ready to get sent to a friend I'm gonna clean it up tune it up put a fresh edge on it make it so she will hopefully enjoy the daylights out of that this guy will stick around as my only assisted and only serrated blade and this guy is just a workhorse so I guess that's it We'll see each other again soon, I hope. Until then, stay well, be kind, do good.
I'll see you later. This is Gigi. I'm out.